Oh, we jumped right up. What up? What up? What's up? What's happening? You know what's the deal. Once again, once again. Um, basically gonna go into uh, uh, it's, it's still deal with that little court case. You know what I'm saying? It's still deal with that. Um, straighten up the bucket. No flies. No fly. But um, yeah. Um, we going into the fact of uh. That uh, 40 rector deal. And this is it. This is it. When the judge, you know, basically said what he wanted to say. And it's all an impropriety. You know, and they're supposed to avoid improprieties. You know what I'm saying? When uh, impropriety is like an untruth, uh, a lie, um, something that's fraudulent, um, a crime, um, a felony, a misdemeanor. Um, wrongdoing, yada, yada, yada. So, um, basically, you know, I was just going over the document and then it's saying here, basically, uh, in reference to, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that December 9th, um, no, December 11th situation where the supervisor says right here, um, she first testified that she called uh, 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 she called. What's this? That the phone call occurred at twelve a.m. Twelve a.m. Yet in a written statement, um, and it says the number yada yada yada. Prepared later on that night, the sergeant wrote that she placed the call to the respondent at eleven forty-five. So what, what, what are we gonna go on? Is it twelve a.m. or eleven forty-five? Right there is the imp is the uh, impropriety right there. All right, that's one. All right, two. This, and did he put he put it here? Uh, the responder himself admitted that he was present when the sergeant called at eleven forty-five. I did say that. I did say that. You know, but the key thing that I went at is under your signed contract agreement. Under the signed contract agreement, it says it in the contract agreement. You know what I'm saying? Because I was explaining this to this, this, this gentleman yesterday. You know, he was telling me that he's also a city employee. And he was saying how his sergeant, no, his sergeant, he worked for a different agency. He said that his um, supervisor told him, hey, um, like say, go move that car right there, hey. So he's going to move the car. And the supervisor says, no, no, no. Go on your meal first. Do your meal. After you finish your meal, then come back. And then move the car, okay? So the supervisor is not paying paying attention to what he said. He comes back to, at the individual and he says, "You know, why didn't you move the car?" You know, I'm just using that as a scenario. He says, "Why didn't you move the car?" He says, "What do you mean?" And he says, "I'm writing you up for insubordination. You didn't pay attention to what I said in the whole nine yards." So he's talking, and everything is in his responses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So stop saying yes, because they're going to trap you on your words. Stop stop answering yes, like yeah, and yeah, and yeah, yeah, you don't understand what we're saying to you. So when you say all of that, we're gonna agree with you, we're gonna trap you in your words and say you said it, and that's it. I said, What did he what was the first action he told you to do? The first thing he told you, he told me to do the A. Okay. When he told you to do A, what happened? You went to do A, what happened? He said he changed his mind and said, Don't do A, go do B. Which was go take his meal. Him and another employee go take your meal. I said, okay, so when they went and took they, when y'all went and took your meal, what happened after? He laid the tames and recanted and then said that um, you know, attempt to write them up for not doing A. I said, didn't he tell you what time didn't he tell you to take your meal? He said, Yeah. I said, Well, you should have wrote that down. What time he actually told you to take your meal. I said, in, in situations such as supervisors like that, document, got a phone, document everything on the calendar today. What he said, what he do, what directors he gave you, document it. Once you document it in the whole nine yards, you didn't say this on this date at this time, sweetening even better, send an email to yourself. To prove that on that date, that time you said this, this was the directive given so going back to my situation, you know, because it's best to talk about my situation instead of exposing yours. But in, in, in relation, 
the supervisor called prior to the start of my tour. The signed contract agreement says you must follow the document, you know, your, your schedule, right? So you're scheduled to be at that location, which is at location A, right? Yeah, I'm scheduled to be there, okay? Can you prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you are scheduled to be there that day? Hell yes, I can. It's right there. There's the schedule. And then up here, it's saying, uh, this little small portion that I put in there, that's basically saying what's in the hospital police patrol guard, um, page 54, paragraph C, where it's saying basically, because on this, uh, Oh, this is this is the um time and leave for um the contract. But it's it's still the same schedule, which is that schedule for December two thousand nine, which is still this. Still the same schedule. But it's basically saying in um in the patrol guide it says that uh you only because if once you reach your point of, 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 like, say, once you reach the job and they want you to go, what's up, man? What's up? And they want you to go from one location and you can ask your brother. You can ask your brother when they want you to go from one location to the next location. All right, Billy? You can ask your brother on this and I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? I, know, I see you done hit the invite. Don't mess around. I invite you. You know that real, real quick and that. But you can ask your older brother, all right? And he'll tell you, once you show up to work in the whole nine yards, and they say, we want you to go from this location to the next location, they got to provide transportation. Why? Because once they give you, uh, like, the mere fact that, that once I showed up to work and she said, I want you to go from location A, where you're scheduled to be, to location B. You're, you're, you're giving a directive? Yeah, you're on the clock. Yeah, so I told you, you on the clock, okay. You better move. Where's the transportation? Under your guidelines, under your uh, hospital police directive, um, the um, patrol manual, you're supposed to send transportation for official uh transport. And <laughs> Billy's like, this is a fact. I'm telling you, this is this how you hang them. You don't hang them up on hearsay. You hang them up on documentation. You know, I understand this individual got their little thing with them. They want to, you know, go at you or people want to go at you on a personal level when it comes to work situations. They get at work and they want to become King and Queen Kong when you know definitely outside the clock is a whole different situation. Because they're coming at you with these bully tactics in the whole nine yards, you stay within your boundaries. As long as you stay within your boundaries, you know what you're governed to do. This is why I always say, drop down your corporate compliance policy. Once you drop down your corporate compliance policy from your employer, you got it. Then you drop down your uh, signed contract agreement. See, because your signed contract agreement is the citywide. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hood's in the house. Spade Hood. What's up, man? What's up, baby? You know, once you drop down your corporate compliance policy, that's one thing. That's what your employer is saying. But your signed contract agreement is that citywide deal. And your employer must go by that citywide. They got to go by that. You know what I'm saying? There will be no making up anything. Billy said, and some of these city jobs are responsible for you while you are driving to work. Yes, they are. It's a two and a half hour window. Technically, it's a two and a half hour window, believe it or not. The, the reason why it's two and a half hours, the city, it takes two and a half hours to get from one end of the city to the other end of the city. So they cover, you're, they're travel, you're covered on the travel time going to and from work. You are. Because of the simple fact you was going to work and you was leaving work. Yes, it is.
that's the same thing as like for the security guards, they would pay them. Um, say they go to a work location, there's no work. So basically, they would give the security guards something like four hours travel time, and that which is two hours each way. Because it's actually two and a half hours, but they give you two hours in that. So it's, it could take you up to four hours. Uh, it could take up to basically at uh, five hours out of your day, which is two and a half hours each way to and from work or to and from home. And that, that's it. So um, the key thing, like I said, is when you get to your work location, and this I got even better because the former uh, commissioner of hospital police said, once you're given the directive in the whole nine yards, you're on the clock. Yeah, they got to follow procedure. Now, the judge wrote, he says, but a lot of the new the new kiss ass, <laughs> new cases, kiss asses want to change the rules. You can't change the rules. You can't change the rules unless it's written in stone. The hearsay they say and all that, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you're talking. It's a lot of lip action. Can you show me what's in black and white? What? Can you show me what's in the signed contract agreement? Oh, I don't got to do... Yes, you do. You got to show me the signed contract agreement. I already blew it up. And uh, I took it off here and put it on that one, blew it up. And you know I'm about to post it in the whole nine yards under the signed contract agreement. And the key thing is you are obligated under the signed contract agreement as far as your work schedule. So if the work schedule said for me to report to Cumberland... And I went to Cumberland, and you calling Cumberland telling me, no, come back to Woodhall. Really? Not a problem. Where's the transportation? What? Where is the transportation? Your supervisor. Right? Yeah. You get paid if he's to supervise, right? Yeah. Then supervise. Do your job. That means you call... Pick it up, patrol. Yes, respond to one two four forthwith. When the patrol gets there, uh, here's the keys. Take the RMP, the RMP. Go to Cumberland. Retrieve the officer. All right, Bruce Morgan. What's up? What's up? Supervisor, right there. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. If I'm lying, brother, shut me down. Tell me right off top. Tell me right off top. If I'm lying, I'm not lying. All right. Uh, like I said, once they once they call you, um, and pick it up. You get there, respond to such such such. Take the RMP. This is the number. Pick up the officer. Retrieve the officer. Bring the officer back here. Now, once he gets to Cumberland, the whole nine yards, and the officer's like, "Yo, I'm here to pick you up. You're you're being reassigned. You have to go back to uh to his command." Okay, not a problem. All right. Um, but I got my vehicle. I'm here to pick you up. Now, the option of you driving your vehicle is yours. Meaning, if you get behind the wheel of that vehicle and you drive your own vehicle heading back to command and in the event that you're, you get into an accident in that vehicle, you and your vehicle are not covered under the city's insurance. Why? You was in your own personal vehicle. It was a personal act. Now, if you get inside a city vehicle and you're driving in that city, state, or federal bill vehicle on official business, and you get into an accident, you are covered 110%. Simple as that. Now, the mere fact that this individual is going to tell you, they're going to lie. It takes 15, It takes 10 to 15 minutes. You know you lie. You know you lie. Why? Because in 10 to 15 minutes, you're going to take lights. It would take us 10 to 15 minutes in a marked vehicle. And that's taking lights in Brooklyn. Even though you're running down straight down Park Avenue in the whole nine yards, you're still going to take lights because the way the light system is set up, it's going to stop, especially at night. Oh, he he didn't do this. He didn't do. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna hang you on the facts. The facts alone. Period. All right. You didn't send. You didn't send transportation, did you? No. Okay, so when did the insubordination kick in? At what point was it? You didn't do what you were supposed to do. At what point? You got the judge saying, um, I'm going to, uh, what did he say? He said he was going to stand by that. That's an impropriety. How are you going to stand by that? How are you going to stand by that? The judge is like, ah, oh, like I'm, I'm a guard. You do not supersede the contract, the signed contract agreement. All right. 
This is a contract. They made it up. It's their schedule. You do not supersede that. Okay? Why? Because it's written in stone what's to be done. You are to follow the contract. That is the fact. Okay? We're going to go even further to... Uh, in the, in this, and see, I love this because since you wrote it up and we went there, it's now case law. It's on the law. So if you pull it to anybody else, on anybody else, they can take and use it and say, no, this right here is fraud. Can't use this. Can't use that. And they'll be like, you know what? How the hell are you going to get me? No, I'm going to get you. All right, there, Joseph Brown, Waterman. What up? What up, Water? How you doing, man? Red of glove, red of glove. Yeah, he said right here, the charges of the uh, of 4 of December um, 2009, charges should be... Sustain. How are you going to sustain an impropriety? You're a judge under Canon's Law 2. You can't. Canon's Law 2. If you're an administrative judge, you must follow the um, Judges' Code of Canons, United States Judges' Code of Canons. All right? So under Canons 1, that goes right there to your integrity, your truthfulness, your fairness. Of being impartial. You lost right there. Then we're going to go to Candace 2. Candace 2 is the appearance of an impropriety. Judges and lawyers. Lawyers, Candace 9, are to avoid impropriety, even the appearance of an impropriety. This action right here is impropriety. Why? Because A, let me go down the line for you. See, because y'all seem to think that, you know, most of these people, are most that most of the city workers or whoever are just dummies. A, she's called at 11.45. Yes. Was the officer on duty? I, 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 she wasn't on duty, but do we, was he on duty? No. Then technically on the signed contract, you can't even talk to him. It's not on duty? No, there will be no talking. If you're smart, you wait until 12 o'clock. And you inform them that the RMP is already in place. It's already in route to go retrieve that officer. That's how you do it. So let's go there. That's A. It's 11.45. No, he's not on the clock. All right. B. Did she send the vehicle? No, she didn't. That's a double no-no. C. Did she write it up? Yeah. What time did she end... Did it, what time did it end when she put the closing on her write-up of this instrument, of, of, of the statement? She put it in at a, what's that, 0, 0.30 um, hours? 0.30 hours. So you have 45 minutes to send that RMP there to, treat, to retrieve that officer. But you were more caught up in your emotions than like, I'm trying to screw this man over. I'm probably going to try to screw this person over. Why? Would that be because of the ongoing nonsense that was there? Hence you screaming down the hallway. Um, get the post. And the individual has a patrol post. More into an emotional situation when you're trying to tell somebody what to do. And then you're doing it in a disrespectful and unprofessional manner. You're yelling down a corridor. Are you emotionally compromised? In doing this. So now you got to get your people to back you. To cover up what it is that you did. This is what y'all did. Yo I did this this and that. He, he did this and that. Came at me. See the, the key thing was I had supervisory experience. Yeah I used to be a supervisor. So I knew everything. It's like chess. Every time you step out of place. In the whole nine years. I got you. I already knew it. I already knew it. So when we went upstairs. I'm ready to put my chips on the table. This is it. This is that. Then you, then the corruption kicks in. The union rep is running nonsense. Um, what was his name? He was from uh, Cooney. Yeah, he ended up getting separated because he got caught doing some old nonsense. So he ended up getting separated. The other individual came in, don't know. See, I need to be a union rep for me, y'all. I would smoke them because I know. And this, I'm, I'm gonna hit you hard. This ten years deep. It's been ten years now, but under the under the under the contract and under the um, how would you say the decision of a fraudulent decision? Well, under the Jackie Robinson, there's no statute of limitation. That's what hey, 
under the um decision made by the judge that was uh, a fraudulent decision, you got something like 20 years. This is stuff you need to read and understand this. You know, you got like all this time you need to read this. And when you read all of this information, you need to know how to utilize this in your favor against them. You know, because you got these people. I mean, I hear horror stories. I got people in different city jobs just telling me, oh, I was going through this, this and that. I'm like, well, did they cause the hardship? That's a hardship. Did you, you know, did you um, report it? Well, I reported it to the supervisor above them, but that supervisor basically, you know, that's their buddy. Did you put it in writing? What? Did you put it in writing? Yeah, but it still don't make nothing. All people real right off top really don't make nothing. Really? So what is Mayor Order 16? Executive Order 16. What? What is Mayor Order, Executive Order 16? When you pull down Mayor Order Executive T um 16, it says basically uh it, it, it shows uh, what DOI does and how you're supposed to report the corruption in the whole nine yard and your abuse. Any um, violation of corporate compliance, which is un under mismanagement. You got to utilize this stuff to protect yourself, especially if the union's not doing what it's supposed to do. And when they don't do what they're supposed to do under their fiduciary, you go after them as well. The union's just an agent. Like a lawyer, he's just your agent. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know. You know, that's what I was explaining to the the individual on, on yesterday. He, and he was like, what? He was <laughs> He's getting mixed up in the traffic. I was like, yeah, so you got to understand what they actually are. They're actually agents. The judge is the ordinary person. You got to understand that. Once you understand each person's role and what it is that they do and what they're obligated to do in reference to you and your situation in, in, in that, that case and that, in that and, uh, you, you basically got it. You, you, got, you got them locked in. See, like um, you're going upstairs to your, 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 your labor relations. Okay, you lock them in under their corporate compliance policy. When they violate any corporate compliance policy, remember their corporate compliance policy is registered with the state. So when they violate that, they violate they violate um, business law. And you track them, you crack, you just trap them inside that jurisdiction of business law. Now, when they violate the business law and the actions are doing that, did they violate any penal laws? Meaning, when well, you're a public servant, yeah, did you file that document? Yes. Is it a fraudulent document? Yes. Mm, 175.35. No, 175.30. Um, or for instrument filing on the record with false written statements, a class A misdemeanor. Are you a public servant? Yes, I am. Okay, 195.00. Okay. Class A misdemeanor. This is New York State Penal Law Code. You know how you go after the criminals? I'm going to lock you up and lock you up. That goes after that same person. <laughs> lock you up, lock you up. Same game. See, that's the thing that gives me, because, you you know, I was like lost in the storm for a minute. I, like I said, I keep saying it. I was stuck in the bottle. I had to put down the bottle and pick up the book. The book has changed. The book is now a cell phone. And you could PDF anything. And once you PDF it, you got all day to sit up there and read it with understanding. All right. There's like um two new things on the top of my list that I want. <laughs> and that's uh, Black's Law Dictionary, the 10th edition, and now the 11th edition. I have nine editions. Nine. So I have nothing else to do but to sit up and read. I'm, I'm talking trash right now because yesterday I happened to see... <laughs> on my on my own storyline, a number of senior personnel. I ain't gonna say your name, but I seen them there and they're looking at the document that I had up, which had the four monkeys <laughs> and one monkey's holding the cell phone. And underneath I had basically who the individuals was. And the individuals was the senior vice president. The labor relations uh, director, the um, human resources director, the EEO, 
right? The senior vice president, the human resource director, labor relations director, and facilities EEO. Those four on the top, those are basically like officers in the whole nine yards. And under it, it basically went to the employer's corporate compliance policy, where um, under their rules and, uh, um, rules and regulations, where it says that the uh, senior vice president has the authority over the uh, labor relations and human resources. And the senior vice president was at Woodhall. Check that out. Boom. Now, let's show how the ugliness come in in the cover-up and the parachutes. We're going to move forward to uh, what they were supposed to do when this idiot took his vehicle and threatened people with his vehicle. I'm not going to just say me. Three people. Three, 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 three separate times. Three separate peoples. Three separate incidents. While on probation. And it was all reported. Once it was reported to these four people. He was supposed to be separated from services from the gate. Oh, I forgot. He came in under, what is that? Cronyism. Hired by a friend of a friend or whatever. So you're going to toss that and let him do what he did. Violate rules and regulations. And then when it gets real ugly in the whole nine yards, you're going to say, well, it is what it is. Just take it. That's what's going on. And you're out, and we're going to leave him in for the next eight years while he continued to do what he was doing and made other people who suffer at a total, it was more than 50 people. What brings in cumulative effects, right? So if each person got four people in their family, we're up to 200 people, right? And you're making these people suffer because of your decision. And then you're going to give the people that was there that was supposed to take, that was supposed to take action under mayor or mayor executive order number 16. See, because once they was notified about it, they were supposed to take action and they failed to do so. So when you fail to do so and you in a position of a public authority or you're in a position of, 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 of uh, how would you say, it? as a public servant and you're supposed to take action, your, your actions of gross negligence brings about what? Because you know, or reason to believe have known. And this individual's cause of injury. Mm. Kind, of follows, kind of falls on like, what's that, criminal mischief? Based on the fact you know? It's questionable. Oh, wow, the light went out. You know, it's questionable, you know. It's something to think about. It's something to think about. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, with the criminal mischief, you know, it's something to think about. But these are the individuals who, you know, who's supposed to be the watchdogs and in, in, in straightening this stuff out and not letting it run amok within the system. This is how your system becomes tainted in the whole nine yards. And then other people end up suffering behind this. You know, this is this is it. So, like I said, uh, we go into the fact that, um, back to that judge, where he said, sustain, sustain on the impropriety, right? Let's go to Canons 2, baby. Canons 2. Where it says you're supposed to avoid it. Y'all think I'm joking? Pull up U.S. Uh, a judge's code of professionalism and responsibility. Pull up Canons 2 and read that. I'll tell you off right there. And all you got to do is say, okay, I'm going to pull that up. And then you go, well, what time do you start work? 12 o'clock. What time did she call? 11.45. So, no, she can't say nothing under the contract. Can't say nothing. Can't tell you to do nothing. Why? Only time you could tell an officer to do something was a state of emergency. What was the state of emergency? 9-11? Hell yeah, they could tell you what to do. Sent that right across the TV screen on the bottom. All officers and uniformed personnel report for duty forthwith. Yeah. Yeah. Emergency situations such that we got triple sevens, report for duty. Forthwith. Blackout, report for duty. Forthwith. Yes, they could do that. But there was no state of emergency. <laughs> you better go. You better come back here. This little psych patient. Knock it off. 
knock it off. I went by there and I seen the supervisor. <laughs> Gotta love her. And she was like, I said, what do you think about that decision? She's just like, you know, you already know. And we just left it at that. The key thing they wanted to do is to basically get past that two-year deal under the whistleblowers. So it was a whistleblower's two years. We could just get past that. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first plot to deceive. Your lawyers are so sharp, but they're not thinking of the full aspect of it. You know, they're looking at people like, oh, the average person don't know they're dumb. Ask a question. All you gotta do is, oh, what is this law? What is the protection? How am I protected under this? And then it will tell you. That's the difference. Oh, well, there's a there's a time frame. Oh, it's, it's too late. There's a statute of limitations. You passed the statute of limitations. Mm. And passing the statute of limitation, was there any deceit, any deception? Did you deprive? Well, that really doesn't matter. Did you deprive? Would you put your license on? You don't even get a license. You got a bar card. Would you put that on it? Oh, no, don't tell me nothing. Would you do it? I don't even want to talk to you no more. Why you don't want to talk? Would you do it? I look at those who was... Who was I, I had a guy. He contacted me. You know, because... um. Uh, Clark Pena gave me the guy's number, and I was, you know, I was really going through this. This is back, and I contacted this individual, who was basically trying to basically fight for us, allegedly to fight for us, as far as um, representation, because the union wasn't doing the right thing. So the immediately, immediately when I told him the situation, he was like, "How long was this? Oh, it's, it's at that two year point. Like, no, you know, like I'm not even going to go any further." You're not even listening to the facts. Yo, Clark, tell your boy to holler at me, for real. I will eat him up. I don't give a damn how much of a lawyer he is. I will eat him up. You're not even listening to the facts. you just based on, ah, uh, blow him off. Don't worry. You know, I'm not even going that far. You know, blow him off. Because if you'd heard the facts in the whole nine, you'd heard the fight. Key is who they in bed with. That's the key. When they be talking behind the scenes, yo, well, we gonna do this, we gonna do that, we gonna let this rock, we gonna let that rock. When you when when you can shut that down, and that and catch and hold them accountable to their actions, like they hold you accountable to your actions, hold them accountable to their actions. Then they'll be like, you know what? I'm not going to mess with this. I'm not going to mess with it. Why? Why? Because you know the deceit is there? You know what I'm saying? Somebody just jumped in. Who that just jumped in? You know? The key, I mean, if I wasn't telling the truth, all right there, what's going on, Pringle? If I wasn't telling the truth, I'm going to tell you right this. None of those senior personnel will be coming to my page to see any of these videos, to see any of those documents, period. I'm not hanging them up on stuff I'm just making up. This is your documentation. This is real. This is what they use when they bring you up on bring you upstairs on these doggone nonsense hearings and that. You know, like I like I said, I had the other officer telling me, yo, man, they writing this up. They taking and making a sign these. These um these um documents for overtime. I said that's a contract. Anything you sign is a it's a contract. Yeah? I said, okay, so um if you don't stay, do they give the contract back? He said, nah, they keep it. So what did how, what's the what's the end of that? You know, like, why would you make me sign something? And it's just to benefit you. You know, like you know, what what do I get in return? Oh, we could just do this. Really? Show me that in writing. Show me in on your signed contract agreement. This is what you got to hold them to. This is what you got to start reading on the regular. 
Here's my contract re agreement. Force your union because you pay for union representation to show you that, to explain that to you. They must do this under their fiduciary. They must do this. Show me that. Show me where it says I must sign this document. I can dig when you say, okay, you know, it's mandatory overtime. You got to stay. Okay, I could dig that part. But why are you making me sign something and making this instrument that I sign? It's basically like an accusatory instrument because now you can use it against me at any given time at your leisure. What's my part on this? Then all of a sudden, at the end, when, they, when I'm not staying, you're not giving me back that, that contract. How do I know you destroyed? You, it was destroyed. How do I know it wasn't taking place in my file and possibly used for the later date for some other nonsense that you could just possibly make up? It goes down. It goes down. No matter what you say, look at my situation. <laughs> no matter what you say. They're caught red-handed. They just straight up caught. You know what I'm saying? Here it is. You got two mayors. It's real simple. 2008. When you had on the last outgoing mayor, and he didn't give a, he didn't give a shit. You know what I'm saying? Just bought into his next election that ride him up to what is that? 12 until we got this into um, De Blasio came in. But he didn't give a shit because the person that's doing his last four years within his last two years really doesn't care. Because they're going out. Unless they're going elsewhere for another election to get in somewhere else to get in another office. They really don't care. They really don't. So he's like, oh, they could do what they want. It's real simple. Look at how many people they was getting rid of illegally from sanitation, from transit, and the whole nine yards. They didn't have to bring those people back because their unions were fighting for them because of the illegal, act, the illegal tactics that was being done. So they had to bring them back. What did your union do? And he's the senior, and the president's the senior special officer. What did he do? Think about that. Nothing. When he was trying to leave to go to a law enforcement uh, union, what he did then? Under pressure, he's going to make a law enforcement division. Then he got these people that still basically don't know, or they just don't want to tell you. How are they fighting for you? What are they doing for you? That's the key. And then you look at the facility where they start doing a number of things that make the personnel happy because they knew what they did. That was illegal tactics. You know, where they got to they gotta boost the morale. We're going to do this for you. We're going to give you this. We're going to do that. You know? But what about, what about the corrective actions? You know, did you do anything in reference to the corrective actions to all of that stuff that was done to the people? Because I'm sitting right here. Oh, oh! You got to file. Oh, I can file, and you know it's going to be a chain reaction. <laughs> See, because it's so ugly how the uh, state was involved, and they didn't even want to do what they were supposed to. Do. They held up. Everybody held up. Somebody said, "You know what happened to you is 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 they brought about the machine." Mm. Time to take the machine apart. Piece by piece. Each individual. What was the judge's responsibility? What was your lawyer, your representing lawyer's responsibility? Or your representing union's responsibility? What was their legal representation responsibility? The mere fact that the supervisors was bringing fraudulent information to them in the whole nine yards, their representative was supposed to say, no, we can't use that. Their attorney was supposed to say, no, we can't use that. But the mere fact that they did use it, that brings about their actions inside for the rector where they violated their canons under canons 9, the mere appearance of an impropriety. And then we're going to go to uh, New York State Judicial Code of Conduct for lawyers. We're going to go to, what was that, 8.4. Misconduct. You're going to go to misconduct when misconduct you... Uh, using deceptive practices. Why? You're using fraudulent information. Those are violations of the law. And you're an attorney and you're using this. 
And my lawyer at 8.3 was supposed to report you. But it's a dance inside the courthouse. Y'all in that well. Doing the dance, baby. Ooh, it's good to learn how to how that dance go. The ship was sunk from the beginning. It was never able to sail because of the mere appearance of an impropriety. So you could not bring about that manifest because the manifest was tainted. So you couldn't enter onto the ship. If you once you enter onto the ship, the ship would be torpedoed. So there will be no commerce. Simple math, baby. Simple math. <laughs> You got you got you got to get into this. Man. I'm serious because um, a court is a ship. It is, and it's in commerce as it goes out to sea, under current sea money. <laughs> All right, and everything that goes on that ship must come come upon that manifest under business law. And under that, then it's what you're trading. Now, there can be nothing fraudulent on that manifest, such as the employers uh, uh, representing lawyer and their fraudulent documents. <laughs> Got it? I tell you, I tell you, this is incredible. And like I said, study this every day. Every day. I just had to come on... Now I ain't trying to hold you guys up. I had to just come on because the individual, when he was inside, when he was telling me yesterday, and I'm like, no, that's this and that. And he was just losing it. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Stop saying yes and pay attention to what I'm saying to you. You go by the first action. Okay, what was the first action? He told me to move the car. Okay. So when you went to move the car, what did he do? He stopped me from moving the car. And then changed it to B. Why? Because he stopped you and changed it to do something else. He told me to go to meal. So you went to meal. Yes. Okay, what happened after that? Next thing I know, he's contacting me and he's telling me that he's writing me up for not moving the car. For the first action. Did he stop you? Yeah. At what time did he stop you? He stopped me at this time. There it is right there. Write it up. Put it in your phone. Send it as an email back to yourself. And use that as an accusatory instrument to him. Simple math. Simple math, baby. That's all. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got it? Look. It's time to close this one out. But uh, you know what time it is. The facts cannot be altered nor denied. Y'all need to help those people out who keep using their fraudulent stuff. I'm going to keep on posting your fraudulent stuff. Hanging you. In public view. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't mind. You didn't mind hanging me. How did I find my case online? You hung me. I'm going to hang the crap out of you. you. You know what time it is. The facts cannot be altered nor denied. You guys have a wonderful evening. I was just looking at the game. Oh, oh, oh. They doing something. You know, they was winning. Now they down. You know what time it is. I'm Ghost. Enjoy.